Hello, my friend. I hope you're having an amazing day. Have you ever, you know, reached out for food that was not on your plan when you were exhausted? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to share with you the way I deal with that um, situation so that then I can still stick to my plan. I can still follow what I said I would eat and reach the benefits, whether it's weight loss, where it's muscle building, whether it's a boost of energy, whatever your plan is about, you can get if you follow this few steps that I'm going to share with you. Let's see. So today we're talking about how to stop reaching for chips when we're exhausted. And of course, you may not reach for chips, but maybe you reach for chocolate, ice cream, pizza, cereal, you name it. Of course, it doesn't matter. But here are the benefits that I get when I stop myself from reaching to reaching out to the, the, the pizza or the cereals or the cookies when I'm feeling exhausted. First, I don't eat as much junk food right? And the second thing is that I really give myself the most relevant self-care in the moment rather than going for the food. And that means that it's the third benefit. That means that then I start breaking this cycle of exhaustion eating for good, right? It's the first step, but it's crucial. It's a crucial one. Let's see how I do it. But first of all, who am I? How am I qualified to tell you about my experience about, you know, stopping overeating when we're exhausted. Well, my name is Nader Cezana and I go by Nan. I'm a certified life and weight loss coach. I call myself the cravings coach because as a former binge eater and snacker for 30 years, I now love helping coaches eat what they said they would eat with zero fear of having extras so that then they can get stronger than ever. And I love that, as you can tell. So, here is my current experience. I'm following a food plan based on micronutrients. My goal is to build muscles for my better future. And it makes sense to me because I'm turning 50 in May and I really want to give my future self the best body ever. And it starts with food, right? And sticking to our plan. So here are the three steps we're going to follow today. First, we're going to notice the pattern, what's happening when we're exhausted, what makes us reach for the food, because then we can question, is this really the way we want to deal with the, the exhaustion? And then the third step is to decide, to decide what's best for us, right? Super important. So let's start with the first step, which is to notice. So let me share with you my experience. So not so long ago, I was feeling tired. I had slept six hours the night before. It was 2 p.m. and I was feeling that tiredness, you know, in my body. And then my brain invited me to think, I need some chips, right? And when I realized I was thinking, I need some chips, immediately I felt that sense of desire for the chips right? And what did I do out of that desire for the chips because I was thinking I need some chips? Well, simply, I kept thinking of the chips all the time. I saw them as the unique solution to my tiredness, of course, and I didn't question that association my brain was making. Chips equals solution, right? I completely forgot my food plan and my goals, and I ate the chips, right? But as a result, I didn't fulfill my real need to rest and also my real need for a better, healthier body for my 50th birthday. All right, that's what I created for myself. So if we look at it, um, here's the chain of events. First, there's the tired feeling. And then I had a thought about my tiredness, which was, I need some chips, as if chips were the solution to my tiredness. See, and this is what's created this emotion that led me to take those actions that created this impact. So if we recap, if we take that, that shortcut, basically this thought, I need some chips, created that result that I didn't fulfill my real need to rest. Or we can put it this way, the thought, I need some chips, created that reality for myself that it didn't fulfill my real need to rest, right? And what's important, and I, I'd love for you to, to know, is that all circumstances can't make us feel any emotion. And in that particular situation, the energy level that I was experiencing, my tiredness, 
couldn't make me feel desire for the chips. Okay, it was completely irrelevant, right? There was no relationship there. There was no connection, but my brain was making one because all thoughts create more emotions. If I was feeling that desire for the chips, it was only because my brain was telling me, uh oh, in that situation, tiredness, right? We need chips. That was my brain was saying, all right? And the circumstances can't drive our actions. I was feeling so tired, okay, but that didn't lead me to eat the chips. It, it doesn't make any sense, does it, right? But what led me to eat the chips was my thought, I need some chips, right? That's the only thing that made me eat the chips, the thought, I need some chips. And all circumstances can't produce our results. If I didn't fulfill my need for rest, my need to sleep, it's not because I needed to sleep because I was tired, it doesn't make any sense right? But I didn't fulfill my need to sleep because I was thinking that the solution was somewhere else, because I was believing I need some chips, right? So our thoughts produce our, produce our results. Now we know that we can question this chain of events, right? And here are the questions that I like to ask myself that, I, that helped me move forward. Because I really believed in that moment that, yes, I needed some chips. <laughs> but then when I thought about it, I asked myself those three questions and that helped me get out of this loop. The first one was, how can chips help me feel better right now? And it was a genuine question. I do believe that when our brain makes an association like this, tiredness equals get some chips, it's because we've got a good reason, it's got a good intention, it's well-meaning. So what was that association that my brain was making? Well, simply put, I realized that when I'm feeling tired, I'm low on energy. I also know that food brings me energy. So that's how I connected the dots. It made sense to me when I explored that, that my brain wanted me to eat food to get more energy to solve for the low energy I was feeling Except that, of course, this low energy I was feeling had nothing to do with the food. It was all about the sensation of tiredness because I had slept only six hours the night before instead of my usual eight, right? See, I like to ask myself really truly that question, how can chips help me feel better right now? Because my brain does believe that really chips are needed. So it's important to know what's behind it rather than just discard it as ridiculous, right? But we can still ask ourselves the second question, how can chips help me feel better in the long term, right? Because it's also important to notice the truth in the situation. And in that case, my answer was simply that, no, they can't. They can't make me feel better right now, even though my brain thinks they do, and in the long term either, right? Because chips are not what I need right now. So that led me to the third question, how can I make myself feel truly better now? And that helped me find the solution. So I could have had a nap. I could have gone to bed earlier, right? I could have simply rested and, you know, reordered my day so that I would get some rest. I had plenty other options than the one, and that seemed to be the only one that my brain was presenting my, me, me with, which was food, right? So good to know. I like asking myself questions so that then, I can decide. And I love this icon that I chose here because when we decide, not only are we moving forward, but it's also a way to fast forward, right? We're making a decision. Okay, this is what I'm going to do next time. This is what I'm going to think, feel, and do and act so that then I can create a different result. We have the power, so why not use it, right? And so here are three thoughts that could help you the way they helped me in the moment, right? So the first thought is, I'm thinking chips, chips is the solution, and I also know it's not quite true. So it was really holding both truth, both sides of the story, it, as if it was in my hand, really, so that I could be in between. I could say that it was not all true on one side and all false on the other. It, it could be a bit of both. I was in what we call, as coaches, the, the river of misery. I was between those two beliefs. I believed chips was the solution, really, but I also knew it was not quite true, right? So I can tell myself this truth that right now I'm between two different beliefs and that's it. There's no, there's no issue there. I also told myself another truth that sleep is the best way for me to get rested. 
that was bringing myself back to the circumstances, you know, the facts. I was tired. I was physically tired. And what's the solution, the best solution that works the best for my body? The truth is it's sleep, right? So telling myself this sentence brought myself back to other options. And the third one, the third sentence that I also like to remind myself of very often is that food can never solve my issues, especially that kind of issues, of course, right? But very often, food cannot solve the issues I've got, the problems I have, whether it's my emotion, whether it's a, a situation, somebody else saying something, or my computer breaking down, whatever. Food is not the solution. Food can only be the solution if, I, if I'm honest with myself when I'm hungry, right? That's it. So I hope those questions and those thoughts can help you first stick to your food plan and then reap the reward of sticking to your food plan, which is to create the healthier body you long for. Whether you want to build muscle as I do, whether you want to be lighter, whether you want to lose weight, whether you want to reduce medications, well, that sticking to your food plan, of course, is going to help you benefit from this action. But we think, we, we, we can think that sticking to a food plan can be easy, truly. It's just you plan, that's the first step, you plan, then you eat what's on the plan, and then you simply check that. Yes, you've eaten what was on the plan, you ha haven't eaten off plan, right? So there will be times when you eat on plan, and there will be times when you miss as I do. And it's perfectly normal, right? That's why we check. So it can be that simple. We plan, we eat, we check. But the thing is that perhaps there are bumps on the road that stop you. I know that they can stop me. They have stopped me in the past, that's for sure. Here are a few of those bumps on the road. The first one, we talked about it today, could be tiredness, right? But it could also be temptation. Somebody, somebody is bringing a cookie to you. What to do, right? It could also be hunger, as it was the case for me today. I felt hungry. That could have taken me off plan because I could have chosen to solve the hunger immediately, even though that was not the plan, right? It could also be eating out. We know that when we eat out, the food is going to be slightly, if not entirely different from the one we can have at home. So that could also derail us from our plans. There could also be what I call food incidents. And by that, I'm going to give you two recent examples that I've, that I've say, faced not so long ago. It could be that somebody has eaten the fish that you had planned for yourself today within the family, they didn't know, you didn't say, or they didn't notice, and the food that you had planned for yourself is gone. Okay, now you know you need to get back on track, find a solution, find a substitution. Or it could be what happened this week for me with my applesauce can that broke, you know, instead of opening it, I couldn't open it because the little ring that helps us open the, the, the can broke in my hand. What to do? I had to find a substitution, but I could also have chosen, and I know I have in the past, I could have chosen the easier option, reach for the bread, for instance, and do something completely different, right? Also, something that can derail us um, from our food plan is the lack of results, and that's why I put a little scale here. And namely, well, maybe if you're following a food plan to lose weight and you step on the scale in the morning and you notice that your weight hasn't gone down. Perhaps it's been stable or even worse, it's going up, right? That can create thoughts of discouragement. You can feel discouraged when you notice that the scale is going up instead of down and that can take you off plan, right? So there can be so many bumps on the road that can stop you from following your plan. And this is why if you want customized help, help, sorry, to your specific needs, to your specific challenges and to your particular food plan to reach your unique goals, I can help you. All you need to do is apply to Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good, the coaching program that I've got. And what is it, you may ask? Well, let me tell you, it's the only one-to-one -one online coaching program for coaches like you who want to finally follow their food plans with no force, all right, we're not using willpower anymore, that's done, or deprivation, we're not starving ourselves either, so that they get the health and body that they want. It is possible, that's exactly what I'm doing right now, right? So imagine no longer going from one extreme to the other one, but then I mean obsessing about the food plan to the other end, 
completely ignoring the food plan and binging on your favorite foods, right? Imagine no longer doing that. Imagine also not really, not feeling really bad in your body after having overeaten, like feeling heavy, feeling bloated, feeling sluggish. Imagine no longer feeling terrible about yourself, feeling the shame, the regret, the guilt after overeating, right? Thinking terrible thoughts, terrible judgmental thoughts about you. I know I have. Imagine also no longer questioning the coaching tools that you teach. Do they work? Do they even work? Right? Imagine no longer doubting yourself again. Imagine also no longer hiding from your clients out of fear that they might find out the ugly truth about you. Right? They might find out that you are actually an imposter. Right? And you can't basically help yourself, so you can't help them either. Imagine no longer having that fear. Right? Instead, I want you to imagine knowing deep down in your bones, without the shadow of a doubt, that you will go back on track whenever you have a slip up. Not next Monday, not next month, not on your birthday, but immediately after eating the slice of pizza or whatever, and feeling empowered as you do so. The best feeling ever, let me tell you. Imagine then feeling so good in your body because you're following your food plan, which can be like you're feeling light, you're feeling energized, it's as if you were invincible, right? You're following your food plan and you get the, the benefits of the food that you're eating that suits your body best. Imagine also feeling super proud of showing off, right? Showing off your body, maybe in your new cute clothes, maybe, you know, at the swimming pool, at the beach or on social media, wherever you can. Imagine that. Imagine also being more present for your clients because there's no more this chatter, this incessant chatter about the food, about the, who you are, uh, who you pretend to be. And imagine that presence in your coaching sessions, how it's going to impact your own coaching, how your coaching is going to be so much better now you're fully present with your clients. Imagine that. Imagine also feeling so confident about what you sell as a coach, the services that you provide for your clientele, because you know now for sure that you're a product of your product. Imagine how magnetizing it is for new clients, how many new clients you're going to attract because you are so confident about what you sell. So imagine in your marketing, feeling that certainty that these coaching tools, your coaching tools do work. They work on your clients, but they also do work on you. You have the proof, you have the evidence that they work, even when you thought you were a particularly disparate case, not the truth, right? So imagine how happy your clients will be to renew, to send you referrals, right? And as a result, imagine your bank account. Imagine how much more money you're going to make because of all this. Right. So here are the two steps of the Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good program. I like to see it as a coin, you know, with two sides. So the first one is saying yes. And of course, it goes with saying no. Let me explain. So the first side of the coin is to say yes to your food plan and your dream. Right. The first side is to is all about building the self-trust that you can follow your food plan. I have no question about that. I know for sure that you can follow your food plan, but maybe you're not aware of all the possibilities of all your potential. So I'm going to show it to you as we coach together. So as I said, that was saying yes to the food plan and to your dream, which means that we also say no. We say no. We're learning how to say no to food temptations and to health risks right? And that goes simply with three steps. To say, to say no to food temptations, all we need to do is first understand why we long for the extra food, right? And once we understand why we want the extra food, it's then easy to decrease that desire as if it was a thermostat, right? We simply bring it down, which makes it super easy then, and it's the third step, to decline the extra food, right? It's super easy. It's effort, effortless. And that's what I do all the time right now. So I know that it's working. All right. So 
let me tell you a bit more about the features, all right, of this coaching program. It's a one-to-one -one program, which means it's just you and me. It's online, so it's super convenient. It lasts three months or 12 weeks, which means that you have 12 30-minute private coaching calls with me, right? And in between those coaching calls, which can be weekly, you have unlimited written or audio coaching calls um, in between sessions, Monday through Friday, right? We need, whenever you have something that comes up in between sessions, as of course it does, you can write to me a message or you can send me a voice memo and I can, um, I can answer, I can ask you questions, we can explore that together. You don't have to be alone between coaching sessions. So it requires, of course, investment, but it's so worth it. So the, the, if you decide to use the payment plan, the investment is 3,000 euros, 300 euros, 3,300 euros, to say it clearly. If you decide to pay in full, you save 300 euros because it's only 3,000 euros, right? So this investment in yourself is so worth it for all the benefits that I've outlined for you. But you can also explore that question for yourself so that you can see how beneficial it can be for you to conquer your food cravings for good, so that you stick to your food plan, so that you then you reap all the, benefit, all the benefits. The healthy body that you want is yours once you invest in yourself. Right, so you, I want you to ask yourself this question, why is it so worth it? Why are you so worth it, right? And what is your next step then? Well, the next step, oops, sorry, the next step I want you to take is to book your free Crave Control consultation call with me. So it's a free call in which we do five things. The first one is that we step into that future version of you what you really want, what it will look like, all right? We really paint the picture, we dream big, why not? That's the first thing that we do. The second thing is that we find out what's really stopping you from eating what you said you would eat and for being in the best possible health, right? It's probably not what you think because very often clients come to me thinking that they have no willpower whatsoever or that they're broken or that there's something really wrong with them, right? It's never the case. Let me tell you this, but let's find out what's your core issue, right? So book your free Crave Control Constellation course so that we find out really what the deep cause is for you. And the third thing that we did together during this free Crave Control Consultation call is that we get a clear blueprint. We know what you want. We know what's stopping you from getting it. So now all we need to do is bridge the gap between where you are right now and where you want to be. And so by the end of the call together, you have this customized blueprint retailored to your needs to reach your health and body goals, no matter what. Remember the challenges that we all face, the hunger, the tiredness, the, the, the food incident, right? We reach the goals no matter what, thanks to the method that I've put into place. So the fourth thing that we do during this free Crave Control Constellation call is that we get answers. You get answers to all the questions about working with me, right? So you know exactly what to do for step number five, which is making a clear decision that you like, all right? Are you going to work with me? If it's yes, I'm going to be delighted. I know that for sure. And if you'd rather work on your own, no problem. I really believe that you're the expert of your life, that you know exactly what you're doing. And if you think this is not the right time to work with me, I believe that you know best, right? And I'm going to wish you the best. But if you do want to work with me, no problem, of course, I'd be delighted to help you. To book your free consult, simply scan this QR code or click the link below, right, um, in this uh, YouTube episode, and you'll be directly um, going to the, the, the page of my Calendly so that you can book the spot that suits you best. And all I, need to, all I need to do right now is to thank you for your trust. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope it was truly useful to you, and I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.